If you're a subscriber to our channel, you already know that we love to tell about the latest and greatest archaeological discoveries. If you're not a subscriber to our channel, make today the day you join us. There are always exciting new discoveries from all over the world to tell you about, and we're always as excited to tell you about them as archaeologists are to find them. Let's jump right into it. We used to think that the deliberate creation of works of art was an exclusively human pursuit, but it's becoming increasingly apparent that this isn't the case. In June 2021, archaeologists discovered an engraved deer phalanx inside a cave in Germany's Hartz Mountains. Rather than being engraved by humans, though, archaeologists believe that the art was created by Neanderthals. This suggests, or perhaps even confirms, that our Neanderthal cousins were capable of conceptual imagination. We've long since accepted that Neanderthals could make tools from wood and bone, but now we must also accept that they also made symbolic objects. Evidence suggests that this artifact was carefully disarticulated from a species of giant deer before being scraped clean of tissue, boiled, and then carved with inverted chevron shapes. The meaning of the symbols will never be known, but if Neanderthals could carve symbols, it's possible that they could also communicate with symbols. This is yet more evidence that we've severely underestimated their capabilities from an evolutionary point of view. The Mayans were a mighty ancient civilization in South America, but there's much about their history that we don't know. What little we do know mostly comes from the records of their Spanish conquerors. So their history prior to the arrival of Europeans is cloaked in mystery. That makes it hard for us to understand this cache of green stones, which was found by archaeologist Kazuo Ayama in Cibol, Guatemala in early 2021. Historians refer to these objects as Celts and believe they were used in mass public ceremonies. The find is especially significant because the cache is believed to have been buried 3,000 years ago, a time in Mayan history we know virtually nothing about. 72 polished green stones were discovered in total, making this the largest discovery of its kind in the former Mayan lowlands. Mayans appear to have been especially fond of green stones above all other types of precious stones which has led historians to believe that the color had some kind of spiritual significance to them. The fact that the cache was buried in a cross formation with the points aligned perfectly to the north, south, east, and west is yet another riddle that we're yet to solve. The Vikings are one of the great seafaring civilizations of human history, traveling far and wide and creating settlements wherever they went. They even made it as far as the Americas. It's no great surprise to hear that the remains of several Viking settlements have been found in the British Isles, but archaeologists think there might have been something special about this one in the Shetland Islands of Scotland. It was discovered in May 2021 and is of such size that experts think it may have been the Viking equivalent of a capital city. Viking artifacts have been found in this area as long ago as 1990, but it's now thought that all the artifacts found since then might be connected to this set of five circular structures close to the town of Scalloway. The Viking Age remains of 26 people have also been found at the site, along with painted pebbles and an ancient comb. Within the five circles are the remains of a large structure that might have been a Viking drinking hall. That's enough evidence for some archaeologists to conclude that this is Skraelvoigand, a major Viking settlement that's known to have existed on the Shetland Islands in the past, but for which no location has been proposed until now. In July 2021, archaeologists went looking for the remains of the Royal Palace of Otto the Great in Saxony, Germany. They haven't yet found the palace, but they have discovered a 1,000-year-old church surrounded by ancient burials. Historical records suggest that both a palace and a church were built close to Hefta in Saxony for Otto, who was a Roman emperor. And so if this is his church, his palace must be nearby. The church is cross-shaped, around 100 feet long, and divided into three aisles. 
It stood for 600 years before it was destroyed during the Reformation movement in the 16th century. Aside from the remains of the structure, archaeologists at the site have also found a beautiful bronze crucifix decorated with enamel that was probably made in France during the 13th century. They've even found a large piece of the old church bell. Although Otto the Great personally ordered the church to be built, historical records suggest that he only ever visited it once, upon the day of his inauguration in the year 968. He kept numerous palaces throughout his empire, so perhaps Saxony wasn't his favorite place to spend time. The Brits of the 19th century were a superstitious bunch. They believed in witchcraft and evil spirits, and they did some pretty weird things to protect themselves from any such demonic presence that might enter their homes. In June 2021, this disturbing artifact was found in Oswestry, Shropshire. It's a so-called witch bottle and contains human hair, a human tooth, and human urine inside an otherwise beautiful Victorian glass apothecary vessel. This example of a witch bottle is only around 120 years old, but they were everyday items inside British homes as long ago as the 16th century. The hair, teeth, and urine usually came from the homeowner, who would have believed that leaving permanent traces of themselves within the property would prevent evil spirits from entering the home while they were out. Creepily, a severed doll's head was found next to the witch bottle. It's thought that the two finds aren't connected, but they're terrifying objects to find side by side. Metal detectorist Chris Langston, who came across the artifact in Woodland, was sufficiently spooked by his find to put it straight back where he found it. The gap between making an archaeological discovery and fully excavating and understanding it can sometimes be very long. Here's an excellent example of that from Jerusalem. The first signs of this enormous public building were discovered close to the Western Wall in the 19th century. But the excavation project wasn't completed until 2021. Looking at the size of the building, perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that the work took so long. This is the ancient equivalent of a vast town hall and would have hosted government meetings and public functions a little over 2,000 years ago. Local archaeologists say that this is one of the most magnificent and important Second Temple period buildings ever found in the city. As magnificent as it was, it probably didn't stay open for very long. Historians think that it was partially destroyed along with the rest of the Second Temple by the Romans in the year 70, after which it was abandoned. Fortunately, the Romans didn't do a thorough job of destroying it. There's enough of the building left to preserve it and it'll soon be open to tourists and locals as a museum. In July 2021, a prized relic finally came home to the city of Coventry in England. This is the medieval Coventry Sword, a 500-year-old weapon with a strange history. When it was brand new in the 1400s, it was carried through the city by the mayor during official processions, including visits by King Henry VI and Queen Margaret of Anjou. Coventry was the fourth biggest city in England back then and even became the temporary royal capital during the Wars of the Roses. In 1471, King Edward IV decided to punish Coventry after the city refused him entry before the Battle of Barnet. Knowing that the sword was symbolically important to the city and its people, he confiscated it. No one knows what he did with it after that but it eventually turned up in a rubbish heap in Whitechapel, London in 1897. By then, little more than the hilt remained. Coventry city authorities asked for it to be returned home, but instead it was sent to a museum in Glasgow, Scotland, to be put on display. It took another 125 years for Coventry to get its wish, but it's back home at long last. This next collection of artifacts made history in two different ways when it was discovered in Augsburg, Bavaria, Germany in May 2021. It's a treasure trove of more than 800 objects, including coins, jewelry, and tools from the ancient Roman era, making this the largest Roman discovery in Germany for more than a century. On top of that, it's also the oldest Roman discovery in Bavarian history. Archaeologists say that the sheer volume of objects proves that there was an ancient Roman camp here and that tests carried out on some of the wooden artifacts 
date them to between 8 and 5 years BCE. The discovery took place on the grounds of a former industrial building that's recently been demolished to make way for new apartment buildings. Among the artifacts are hairpins, clothes clasps, tiny bells, and coins depicting the face of Roman Emperor Octavian Augustus. Augsburg is one of Germany's oldest cities, with a history that goes back more than 2,000 years. This discovery proves that the Romans must have been among the city's first occupants. Our next discovery is both old and new at the same time. History remembers Leonardo da Vinci as one of the most accomplished men who ever lived. A phenomenal artist, sculptor, and scientist, he was the very definition of a polymath. As it happens, he also had an enormous family, one that still exists today. New research into da Vinci's family tree has uncovered a history that spans 21 generations over 690 years and leads to 14 living male descendants of the Renaissance master. The enormous research project was carried out by Agni Sabato and Alessandro Vesozzi, who spent over a decade researching the Italian's DNA. Focusing on the continuous male line of da Vinci's family, they traced his line back to the birth of Michel da Vinci in 1331, reaching Leonardo's birth as a sixth-generation grandson in 1452 and then continuing through five family branches to reach the modern-day relatives. Prior to their work, it was thought that only two descendants of da Vinci still existed in the world today. Leonardo himself had no children, but had 22 half-brothers thanks to the extraordinary efforts of his father, Piero. The discovery of living relatives could now help to verify the authenticity of materials and works thought to have been handled by da Vinci but for which no provenance currently exists. Is this the mother of all Neolithic era discoveries? Figuratively speaking, yes it is. This statuette is an exceptionally rare example of a uniquely Neolithic kind of figurine known as an Earth Mother. It was found on the banks of the river Somme in France in December 2020. According to archaeologists and scientists, it's roughly 6,000 years old. Figurines like this with tiny cone-shaped heads and undersized arms but enormous hips and buttocks have been found in the past at Neolithic sites all over Europe. What makes this one so special is that it's exceptionally well-preserved and it's further north than any other discoveries of its kind. Archaeologists have nicknamed the figure the Lady of Valère Carbonel and believe she's connected to a cult that worshipped a fertility goddess in ancient Europe. Despite her excellent state of preservation, she was probably abandoned as a botched job as soon as she was created. The figurine was discovered in six pieces, still inside the ruins of the Neolithic kiln that she was fired in all those years ago. 2,500 years ago, a huge textiles factory was burned to the ground in Spain. In 2019, it was finally rediscovered. And the archaeologists responsible for the discovery think that the act of burning the factory down might have been ritualistic. The site of the factory is within an already historic area called Casas de Terren Nuelo in the southwest of the country. Based on the evidence contained within the ruins, archaeologists believe that the building hosted an enormous banquet that involved the slaughter of over 50 horses, pigs, and cows. It seems nothing was spared from the flames. 36 loom weights have been identified at the site, along with 24 spindle whorls. These artifacts predate any textiles that have ever been unearthed elsewhere in Spain. Quite why the land's ancient occupants would want to deliberately burn down such a facility is unknown. The textiles that were produced here would have been made with very fine threads and so would have been considered extremely high quality at the time. It must have been an enormous sartorial loss to the area. Coin discoveries are such a common occurrence for archaeologists that most of them aren't worth reporting on. But there are exceptions to that rule. Here's one of the most fantastic exceptions we've seen in recent times. It's a huge hoard of over 6,000 medieval coins that were found in a Polish cornfield in January 2021, 
and they came with a gold ring for good measure. The ring wasn't the only valuable artifact that came with the silver coins. There were also a few solid silver ingots. Archaeologists believe that the treasures, which were found in the village of Slusko, are around 900 years old and might even have a royal connection. There's an inscription etched into the ring which reads, Lord, may you help your servant Maria. This could be a reference to Dobra Niega Maria, daughter of Vladimir the Great and wife of Polish Prince Casimir the Restorer. The artifacts come from the right era for the connection to exist, but sadly it can't be proven. Whoever the original owner of the treasure collection might be, it's one of the most significant medieval finds in Polish history. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.